Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating a wall decor piece inspired by an item that I saw online at Kirkland's for $69. Now when I saw this piece, I fell in love with the ironwork and metal flower-like design and I knew that it would provide the perfect challenge for me to recreate using items from the Dollar Tree and low-cost items from my local home improvement store. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools that I used to make this project in the description box below. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey hey and welcome back to my awesome subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into the project. Now here is my inspiration for this project today. Now I thought that this item was absolutely beautiful, but I didn't want to pay $69 for it. So I decided to create my own version, and I grabbed a few supplies from the Dollar Tree and cheap wood for the frame to make it come to life. Now for this project, we will need one one by two piece of wood, and these come in lengths of eight feet and are very inexpensive at only $1.50 for each at the Home Depot. We'll also need some of these 32 inch skewers that I got from the Dollar Tree, and just know that these are also available at Walmart for 88 cents under the Ozark Trail brand. And we'll also need a piece of black poster board from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we want to do is have the wood cut to size and we're gonna cut two long pieces at 33 inches. And we're also gonna cut two short pieces and these will be cut at six inches. And now that all of our wood pieces are cut, we will be staining these and this time I will be using some early American stain to stain my pieces. Now I usually, usually use my Jacobian stain, which I love, but in order to match my inspiration project, I am using this early American stain. So I'm gonna stain the sides and the front um, of both of the small pieces, making sure you don't stain the back or the end pieces. Now for the two longer pieces, we do wanna stain the ends of these and also the front and sides as well, and then sit them out to completely dry. So while those dry, we're gonna work on our skewers. So I just grabbed a handful from the package and I'll be using this black acrylic paint to paint my skewers. Now you can use whatever method you like to paint the skewers. I'm just using one of these paint brushes from the Dollar Tree and I wanna make sure I cover the entire skewer with the paint except the pointy end and what you're holding while you are painting them. And here's one of the skewers completely painted and just repeat this process for the remainder of your skewers. And here they are, sit out and just let them dry completely. And now that they're dry, here they are. Now we're only gonna end up using about three or four of these, but I like to paint a bunch of them for future projects and do it all at the same time. So now we're gonna work on our poster board and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be cutting this into one inch strips. So in order to keep our board from shifting, we're gonna go ahead and tape it in place with some painter's tape. Now I have one of these yardsticks from Lowe's that I'm gonna use to keep my um, lines nice and even and I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to cut my one inch strips. Just be careful cutting with this, the X-Acto knife is very sharp and try to keep it as vertical as possible to make your lines nice and crisp. Now what you wanna do is you wanna cut out 20 of these one inch strips along the short side of your poster board and here are all of mine ready to go. Now what we're gonna do with each one of our strips is we are going to mark them at four and a half inches with an embossing tool. And what this does is create a fold line so everything is nice and even. So I'm just gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna go to the four and a half inch line and make an embossing line at four and a half inches until you have four, four and a half inch sections on that strip. Now once you do have your four, four and a half inches um, sections on there, you just, these will create fold lines so you'll see that it's easy to fold now. Now we're gonna fold that until we have four layers and then for that extra piece that's left over, we're gonna cut that down to about a quarter of an inch and that will be at the end that we're gonna seal it on. So we're gonna fold it over once and then grab our hot glue and run a, a strip of hot glue on that piece and then fold that down on that third section. 
You want to make sure it's nice and even, add some more hot glue on that section, and then fold that fourth layer right on top. And now all you have to do is secure that little tab in place at the bottom and hot glue. Now you can use hot glue or glue stick, use whatever you feel comfortable with. And as you see, it creates this double layer flower petal kind of situation here. And we wanna repeat this for the remainder of our strips until they are all completed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black acrylic paint and I'm gonna be painting the edges of my board because as you see, when you cut them, it exposes that white underneath the black layer. So I'm just gonna apply some of that black acrylic paint on each one of the ends where I cut my flower petals out and then let them sit out to completely dry. And here are, are all of my petals, all nice and painted and dried and ready to go. So by this time, the wood should be nice and dry and we are gonna grab all of our pieces. So we're gonna start with using one long piece and one short piece and we're gonna start assembling our frame. I'm gonna place one of the shorter pieces along the top edge of that longer piece and I'm gonna be using my Surebonder wood stick hot glue just to temporarily hold it in place because I will be screwing my frame together. So I'm gonna apply one of those pieces to one side and then I'm gonna take um, another one of those shorter pieces and apply it to the other side as well. Now once those two pieces dry, we're gonna take that last longer piece and place it right on top of those two short pieces. So this will form our long frame. Now just apply the um, Sherbonder wood stick hot glue on both of those ends as well. And then sure, uh, put that, uh, short, that longer piece on top of the shorter piece. Now here is our frame all held together by that wood stick hot glue. Now I did mention earlier that I was going to secure these with, these with screws. So I'm going to be using some number eight, one and a half inch wood screws to secure the frame together. Now before I add my screws, I always love to drill pilot holes and what this does is prevent your wood from splitting or becoming weakened at those points. So I'm just gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole in the um, top of the frame, making sure you go through both layers and you wanna do this on all four of your corners of your frame. Then once that is done, you wanna put your drill bit in to uh, adhere your screws. And I'm just starting by hand screwing it in and then securing the rest in place with my drill. And you wanna repeat this for all four corners as well. So as you can see, the color of my screw is showing through on my frame and I like to blend those in. So I'm using a combination of this nutmeg brown and this golden yellow, and I'm gonna mix them together until I get a color similar to my stain color on my frame. Now, once you achieve that color that you're comfortable with, go ahead and apply it to the top and inside of each screw with a fine tipped paintbrush and just make sure it blends in well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our frame over to the back side and we're gonna mark the center of the top of the frame. And along the sides, we are going to be marking three inch sections all the way down. And if your measurements are right and you cut the wood cor correctly to size, these should be equally three inches apart. And I'm just going over my marks with my Sharpie just to make sure I can see them just a little better. So now what we're gonna do with each one of our marks is we are gonna be laying one of our skewers across each one of those marks. So I'm gonna take one of my skewers, I'm gonna lay it across the marks, and then I'm gonna cut it where it overlaps at least a half an inch on each side, and I'm using my wire clippers to cut it. Now once it fits pretty good, I'm gonna take that wood stick a glue gun and apply some glue on each one of those marks that I made, and I'm going to be placing my skewer right on top. Now you wanna cut and repeat this process all the way down your frame until you have all your skewers in place. And here is what all the skewers secured in place will look like. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take one long full skewer and we are going to flip it over to the front. We're going to nestle the top edge and bottom edge underneath the bottoms of the frames, making sure the top of the skewer is on top of those ones you placed before. And then place some hot glue on each end just to make sure that it is nice and secure in place. And then you're going to add a little dab of hot glue at every couple of skewers down the middle. And I like to use these Dollar Tree clips to hold it in place. And this will just keep the middle of the skewer from shifting out of place. So now we can grab our flower petals and start putting them in place. So since they are larger than that three inch space, all you have to do is just kind of squeeze them until they come open, just like shown here, and fit them and nestle them into each one of the squares. Now I'm forming a flower where four petals will meet in the middle, and this is what four petals will look like when you put one set into place. And as you can see, they do hold in place while you're working. And so you want to continue this all the way down the frame until you have five sets of the petals. And here's what the frame will look like with all of those petals just holding into place. Now to permanently secure those in place, I'm going to use my hot glue and I'm going to place a generous amount in between the center of each one of those flower petals, just making sure that glue touches the outside of each one of those petals. And then on the outside edges, I'm running a bead of hot glue along the poster board and the frame. Now the poster board will protrude further out than the frame, so there should be a line where you can put a bead of glue there to hold everything securely in place. And then finally, I'm just taking my Dollar Tree broom and I'm removing all of those hot glue webs around my frame. You want to make sure you do this on the front and the back. Now to hang our piece, I'm just taking a piece of jute twine and I tied knots on each end. And I'm just going to secure these in place on each end with a couple of staples with my staple gun. And now this is ready to hang. And here is the final project on display. Now I am so blown away on how easy this was to create. Now I think that these petals and skewers really look like iron or metal and they absolutely turned out amazing. Now combined with the rich wood color, I think these are perfect and you can make one, a pair, or even multiples to connect together and display with hinges for a divider design. You guys have to let me know how you would display these in your space. Now listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you subscribe by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit the bell to be notified when my next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.